Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video to do a rebuild of my foam board Bronco RC model airplane. Let's get to it. Nikki is over for a little visit this morning. Thank you for stopping by and helping. Okay, so this is the uh, foam board Bronco. This is one of my favorite designs. I've been flying it for well over a year. It's all made from foam board. You can make it in two days. <clears throat> the wing spar is the arm and wing technique using the foam board for the spar of the wing. Get a pretty good airfoil shape. It's very light, three channels, elevator, ailerons, and motor, little hatch. There's plenty of room inside. But what I would like to do <clears throat> is create another version of this foam board with some of, of this Bronco, some changes that I've um, just learned over, over flying it. It's got plenty of power. It's just a very uh, well-flying aircraft. I do have to apply some strength back here. It has broken <clears throat> this weak area along here and along the sides here. The popsicle sticks uh, fix that. Also, it's kind of silly to put these servos on underneath here. I put the servos underneath so that you would not see them on top of the wing. The problem is it lands on the um, wing all the time. I had to put in these uh, plywood skids to keep the servos from getting beat up. So it really should put the servos on top of the wing. The other thing that was not <coughs> too bright is the elevator servo. I put it in here with control rods going out to the back here, but this is a lot of wire to have to push through for the um, elevator. What I want to do is take a smaller servo, put it back here somewhere for a direct linkage to the elevator, then just have wires uh, bring it down to the, um, to the receiver. So that is uh, what I'll make on the design itself. To make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to put a canopy on it this time. I think that'll dress it up. I'll have a spinner for the nose. Also, I like this uh, paint scheme a lot. Uh, this is a copy of an F-15 Aggressor out of Nellis Air Force Base. So I'm going to try to use poster paints to paint it. I'll do some work with decals to make that a little bit nicer. This decoration is actually colored uh, packing tape that I put on, which it was just a prototype. It works fine. As I mentioned, the plans for this are available for download from the description. Um, it's, it's really pretty easy to build. You can just take it. There's a little six-inch six scale if you want to plot it out or enlarge it. So that's what I intend to do, and so I will get on with building it now. So this is the start of the foam board wing. There's a link in the description on how you can do it. You can build a wing in 10 minutes. This is the crease where the leading edge is going to be, and I plan the spars about an inch back from that. The cord on the plants is around seven inches. You can make it whatever you like. The spars are two one-inch sections of the foam board, 3 16 inch. This is your standard glue gun, $10 at Amazon to glue everything in. The bottom spar is hot glued in place, one inch back from the leading edge. And now the second foam board spar is glued on top of that, and it really makes for a quite strong wing. We'll plan to fold the um, top part over the spar, glue it at the leading edge of the bottom half of the wing. Spar is glued in place. You're going to have to peel back the paper to sand the foam board to a little bit of a bevel so that when you fold it back to make the wing, you put the glue on this bevel, and it makes for a little bit um, neater uh, trailing edge of the wing. Spars are glued in place and they're really quite strong when you put the glue on top for this uh, 30 inch wingspan model. These are the four fu uh, fuselage booms. Uh, there's two layers for each side. I use some reinforcing drywall tape that I got from Home Depot. There is a two weak spots on the booms. You can see where it goes up to the vertical fin and at the trailing edge of the wing. I will put that tape in between. On the original, I had to use popsicle sticks to reinforce them. 
but the uh, popsicle sticks and the tape should be sufficient for this version of the Bronco. So this is an update on the Bronco, the second edition, and it's come along pretty well. Um, things are pretty much the same as the former one. What I did was I had to add a little bit of nose weight to the to the um, version one. On this one, what I did was I extended the nose half an inch. That way the, the um, motor will be a little bit further forward. It should help with the CG without the need for extra weight. And this is just kind of an idea of, you can see the difference. This is the firewall of the old one. This is the firewall of the new one, just a little bit further forward, which should help keep the CG in place without the need for weight. I've also decided to add a spinner to the motor. Uh, everything's all in place, so I think it'll look a little bit better um, with the uh, spinner in place uh, like that. So tomorrow I'll put on the top of the hatches. I have this old canopy from a um, Mountain Models Mini Flash, and I think that'll look kind of nice. I'll put that on top like that. I've got the paper on the foam boards. I'm going to paint this with poster board paint, acrylic paints. Um, you can see the ends here with the foam spars. I'm going to put some balsa to cover up that end just for appearance's sake. And we'll see what other changes we make as we go along. But so far it's going together pretty well. It's a very simple build. And um, we'll give you an update when we take, do further construction steps. So here the Bronco is coming together. The fuselage, fuselage sides are in place. The firewall is two 1 16th inch plywood that I epoxied together. Note the little cutout for the motor wires to get inside the fuselage. I have popsicle sticks on the front and back of the firewall just to keep everything in place with a little bit of foam board. On the original Bronco for the rear part of the fuselage hatch, I scored the top of the foam board to make it curve, but you can see that with the uh, tape. What I did on this version is put the scores on the inside so the paper would be intact along the top of the fuselage. This is that aft uh, section in place. I think it looks pretty good because we'll be painting on it. We won't have the tape to kind of mask any cuts that we did on the top side of the previous one. Here the model with the canopy that I rescued from a previous uh, Mountain Models Mini Flash that'll fit well onto the hatch of this fuselage, especially with the nose of one half inch longer. This is an initial fit to make sure the wires are long enough for the servos, receiver, and battery. <clears throat> Here's the two cell battery, the Spectrum AR620 receiver, standard Y connection for the aileron servos and the wings, and then an extension that I purchased on Amazon to go to the uh, elevator servo that'll be in the back of the airplane. And now I'm going to do a test of the center gravity. I simply use masking tape to tape the motor to the front with the battery in place. Notice the little notches on the top of the fuselage that's 25% back for the center gravity location, and the model did balance quite nicely. I've dug the channels for the wires to go from the wing servo into the fuselage. The plan is to cover up these channels with tape and with the paint, uh, see how that works out. So here the tape is in place, masking tape on top of those channels. Again, with the acrylic paint, uh, we'll see how that works out. And this is a front view of the model with uh, both aileron servos in place, as well as the tape uh, covering up the um, extension wires to the elevator servo back. Standard um, craft acrylic paints to get at Michael's or any craft store. Love them, clean up with water, um, no odors. Off the internet, I got a picture of a Aggressor F-15 from Dallas Air Force Base. I like the blue kind of lizard paint scheme. So we'll go ahead and interpret how we're going to um, apply that to the model. So just kind of get an idea of the way the colors go. I, with a pen, I'll just draw them on the model with blue and white to differentiate them. Note that they go also onto the ailerons, the hatch. You have to consider the whole model as you outline where the colors will be. I've already made a set of decals. Uh, these are the ones on the white paper with white backing. These are the transparent decals. The transparents are sticky, um, sticky um, uh, setting on the decal. The white are water um, decals that you have to put into water to put on the models. For the painting, I just used a um, throwaway paintbrush and I used a palette to mix because I have the blue and the white so I mix the blue with white to get that lighter blue on the model. If you can find the um, light blue on yourself just by all means go that. You'll need two coats. Here it is with one coat. 
and you can see on the uh, right hand side I've put in the second coat and there it is on the tip that is with the second coat so it covers up pretty well and on the second coat the ailerons elevator top hatch all is in place and you can see that it's looking pretty good as the um, second coat of paint is put on the model decals are in place you can see the uh, clear backing for the sj and the usaf I put a fine coat of Krylon Clear coating on this to keep everything in place, just a dusting so it doesn't attack the foam. I've completed my rebuild of the foam board Bronco. Um, as soon as we get a good day of weather, we'll take it out to the flying field, take another flight. The weight with a two cell LiPo battery came in at one pound, one ounce. And um, this is fun. So what I did was, is the same design. The plans are downloadable from the description. Arm and technique for the uh, foam board weighing just goes together in about 10 minutes. What I did for some changes is I put the aileron servos on top of the weighing so they don't get scuffed on the bottom of the weighing like I did for the previous one. That was just a mistake on my part. A couple popsicle sticks here to keep the bottom from being scuffed up. Notice I did put on uh, decals just to experiment with that um, on the computer. Using both transparent decals for the letters like this then white backed decals for the insignia. It's an important difference between the two. Please look at the um, link I have in the description on decals for the uh, white paper backed water slide ones and then the uh, vinyl sticky ones for the for the clear backing that worked out good. So the um, aileron servos are here. The other thing I did was I experimented with digging little channels in the wing along here and putting masking tape over it then with the um, paint covering over it. I think it came out pretty good. You can see the wire is just going inside here. The tape, just barely see that, but that kind of fits in with the motif of the airplane. So that was a change there. Also, I had an old canopy cockpit that I had from a Mountain Models um, Mini Flash and um, just used that for here. Put on a spinner just for aesthetic sake. The other thing I did that was different than the other one is I had a push rod tube elevator servo in here going all the way back to the elevator. That was just not a good idea. So what I did was I stuck the elevator servo here in the back, then had wires, extension wires, go along here into the receiver, and again using tape to cover those up to kind of mask them with the um, paint. I also know in the previous Bronco this was a failure point. This was a failure point. I glued in some popsicle sticks for the reinforcement to try to prevent that from happening again. The other thing I'd like to point out, it's just a pretty old technique, but it's worth mentioning. This is a rare earth magnet, and then this is a, a screw. So I put in a little shelf here glued to the side, and what happens when it goes down, you can hear it click. It holds into place very well, and usually it's hard to get this just the right length. What I do is I put in a screw here, and then I can adjust the height of the screw such that it matches up perfectly to the magnet there to keep the um, canopy in place. So this is a completed model. I think it'll look kind of nice and we just have to take it for a test flight. Let me just take a moment. I'll hook up the battery and we see the controls. So here's a look inside the um, fuselage. The battery is here, Ford for center gravity, electronic speed controls, a Talon, um, a Castle 15, and then the AR620 um, receiver um, here. And the motor is an E-Flight um, Park 370 motor. So everything fits in pretty good. We'll go ahead and shut this. And we'll take a look at the elevator. Up, down. I think those controls will be about right. And then for the ailerons, that'll work good. And then the throttle. Plenty of power from that uh, 370 motor. So we're good to go, just waiting for some weather, and then we'll, uh, good weather, we'll take it for a test flight. This is my second version of the foam board Bronco. Um, we talked about the changes as we were building it. So the paint thing looks pretty nice, and it's a nice day here at the field, so we will uh, give this a shot and see how it flies, the second version of the Bronco. This is a no kidding mated flight of Bronco 2. I flew Bronco 1 a lot, so I was pretty comfortable with how it flew. The second one flew just as well. 
I think the ailerons are probably a little bit more sensitive than I want. I can easily dial that back on the transmitter, but plenty of control authority, plenty of power. It just handled fine. Try to keep it kind of low and close into the camera for some shots here. But very pleased with the way it flew. Now you can see this is, again, the first flight and look forward to many more flights with this airplane. Very happy with the uh, test flight of the second version of the Bronco. It flew much like the original. I think I'm going to decrease the throw a little bit on the uh, ailerons. It's pretty sensitive in bank, but <clears throat> plenty of power. It slows down, handles nice. Just a very uh, pleasant aircraft to fly. Uh, fly. I kind of aware this is going to happen, but with the uh, camouflage uh, paint scheme with a low sun angle, you really got to keep track of where it is for orientation purposes. That's one of the advantages of this model with the distinctive tail. You kind of know what's right side up and upside down. So again, very easy model to build. You can build it in a day or actually two days. And um, it's just fun to have in the field. Just throw it in the car, fly it, and it's a good model. So free plans just in the description. Download them and you can build your one for yourself.